Tracy, Mimi, thank you for taking the time for your busy schedules to come Such a and have this brief conversation about black quote unquote designers. I think we in 2016, I think we would have moved beyond being considered a black designer. Tell me how, what are the experiences you've had as a designer in fashion, not just a black designer, but what part did the role of being black African American or African play in your career? What kind of specific experiences you had on your journey into being a designer? Hmm. You know, I think it arouses some interest, or it did at the time when I started, mm -hmm. because there weren't many of us mm -hmm. um, out front. Mm -hmm. um, so in a lot of ways, I feel I benefited, because I was mm -hmm. of interest to journalists and the press, and the press, and I think you just, you know, you have to show that you are, um, equal to anyone else in your area of the industry and I think that you know that was important I think that I was brought up very old school you know <laughs> my dad took me aside and said you know prepare to work twice as hard mm -hmm. for half as much mm -hmm. and um, don't let that deter you yeah. and I think that made me a fighter great great and Mimi um, well my approach to design initially um, you know, the same things that it was in my, my head about what it is to be a black designer. It's something that, you know, I had already seen it categorized before. Um, I'd read about black designers and, um, and it was inspirational and it served its purpose um, and let me know that, okay, also, I can also do this. But I feel like um, times have also changed. And, um, and I feel like when you approach design from your race, um, I don't see that as being beneficial when we're trying to touch as many people as possible with the clothes that we make. Mm -hmm. And so um, for me, I, I felt that the approach has been, you know, yes, you can see the color of my skin, mm -hmm. but that's not the approach that I'm using in design. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with the designs that I'm creating. And that today's a, a new day. That mm -hmm. might have worked, you know. Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> right. But I don't feel like that's really beneficial to you now because we're all trying to build, hopefully, global brands right. um, that touch across a lot of different cultures. Mm -hmm. And so there's no reason to be specified into any one group because it doesn't mean anything. Because even when you put us in those groups, um, you're still you're just saying we're all black designers, but we're all very different mm -hmm. black designers, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. We're right. all making very different mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Stephen Burroughs or Willie Smith, yeah. they had they had global clients. They yes. their clothing appealed yes, to yes, everyone, yes. Yes. and you know there are plenty of people who probably to this day don't know oh, that they, they were black. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No. Trace, uh, Tracy, you've had twenty years in the business, and Mimi six. What type of stereotypes have you faced over the span of your career? Wow, I think there's being black, and there's also being a woman. You know, mm -hmm. I think that. You know, as a woman, I think uh, business people, uh, you really have to push them to take mm -hmm, you seriously. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and that's something we struggle with every day, and it doesn't matter how long you've been in the business, but especially starting out, um, that was probably even the most more challenging. Th more challenging than being black. Yes. Yeah, and you know, in terms of race, you know, I always, for me, it's to my benefit, it can never, um, be a detraction from me achieving mm -hmm. goals. And goals. so I never really mm -hmm. um, thought of my race as a problem. It's a problem. I have to see it as an asset. As an it asset. It makes me who yes. I am. and Makes um, you special. Makes me special experience. and it colors all my experiences yes, yes. and also my inspiration. Um, so I always saw it as an asset. Someone else might have thought differently and maybe something didn't come my way because of it, but if it didn't, it wasn't meant to be mine. Because to quote, uh, to, to, to go back towards the history of quote unquote black fashion, Anne Lowe, who was a black fashion designer, was right. a descendant of slaves, taught by her mother or grandmother to be a, a sore, sewed clothes, and she dressed Jackie Kennedy, mm -hmm. and she dressed society ladies. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the ladies went to her because she was black, or because her clothes were beautiful? Because her clothes were beautiful, clothes undoubtedly. Were beautiful. Exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. And when you're designing, you, people don't go to stores thinking, oh, I want to wear that because that black designer did it. I don't think people think that way, do they? I Maybe they did at a time. There are some you know, fans, mm -hmm. um, black women, who yes. are really so excited 
you know, Absolutely. to wear our clothes yes. because they know that we're also black designers yes. and, and they, they want to show their support. Of course, that's you know, important. So that's very real, but I think the average customer going into a store, uh -huh. yeah, it's just, do I like this? Yes, yes, you know, yes. Does it speak to me? Does it, does it speak to me? my body? Does it speak to my exactly. my color, or my lifestyle? Right, and comfort. Sensibilities, exactly. And investment quality. Yep. Mm -hmm. The same goals that other designers would have, I would imagine, exactly. no? Exactly. Can you imagine thing. if you walked into a store and there was like a section for, for black designers? Oh, what about a section for Muslim designers and <laughs> right? Latino? Right. As designers and Indian, right? Indian designers. There must be great Indian designers, you know. Fabulous ones, yeah. And it's funny because I don't. I never thought of fashion as in terms of right? as segregated. Because when I became and wanted to be passionate about fashion, I was a very young man in school, and I was looking at fashion in so many different places, and particularly Vogue. But I must say, I didn't think of oh, well, that's a black designer, Stephen Burles. I related to his clothes because they were wonderful and colorful. Right. Mm -hmm. I was excited to see him in the Vogue, but. Mm -hmm. The clothes excited me much more than you know his being black. I just right. thought, by the way, he's a great black designer. Exactly. No? Yeah. I mean, you can't ignore the fact of, you know, like when we were talking about stereotypes, I would say that one thing that I had noticed is um, when you're trying to make really nice quality products, sometimes I feel like, um, and we were talking about this earlier, but I think it has a lot to do with like classism too, yes. not just, um, you know, you being black or, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a fact that, you know, there's only about 12% of black people in the United States. And if you look at, you know, the, the statistics of how many have wealth or, mm -hmm. or don't mm -hmm. have wealth, and then you look into this industry, when you're trying to make product that's a high-end product, sometimes it's like, would I buy this product from you? Do you understand this product? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or should you be making streetwear because that's where we feel like maybe you can come <laughs> from? Mm -hmm. I mean, those were the stereotypes that you know I had faced mm -hmm. and um, and above all those things I think that our brand has been able to shine because we understand that it's not just about um, that it is just about the product mm -hmm. you know at the mm -hmm. end of the day like we said you can I mean you can try to you know put people in any kind of box that you want to but I think that you know fashion is about creating desire in people so that's the most important thing above mm -hmm. all else and both of you have branched out in some respect, maybe it's not known, but both of you have particularly great talents for making beautiful things for the home, like mm -hmm. Tracy, in your store, you had beautiful pillow slips and, and sheets, yep. which are very important. And Mimi, you have a, a line for Roche Bobois of fabrics for They're modulated modern. sofas mm -hmm. and things. So tell us about that. I mean, how do you branch out and make other products other than fashion? Right. I think there's a natural desire, I think, amongst a lot of designers to branch yes, out. Yes. And, you know, you look at your product and you think, wow, this would be a terrific bed, or this would make an amazing table, mm -hmm. or gorgeous mm -hmm. curtains, mm -hmm. and, you know, we started out just doing it ourselves, mm -hmm. and we sort of made a signature out of the things that, you know, we, we couldn't make extra wide sheets, so the signature was our borders were up the center because we had to join. <laughs> but to that to this day, you know, when I look at those sheets. They look wonderful. Exactly, they wonderful. and they're, they're unique. Unique, they're um, unique sheets. But I think that because we love prints mm -hmm. and we love pattern mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. love color, it translates beautifully mm -hmm. to the home mm -hmm. and to an eclectic environment, which is what I love. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a beige person. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never have been, never will be. You won't walk into my home and, it's and, all beige. and no. see no. a nice muted uh, atmosphere. It's very colorful and alive and there are lots of texture and, mm -hmm. and pattern. And I love that, you know, all things that you love yeah. can be put in an environment and somehow work together because it's nice. an expression of you. So sharing that with other people has been a joy. And Mimi, what about your home? I'm sure it's full of color, riots of color, no? L lots of color, and color pattern. blocking and lots of patterns. And because you know we do prints, we do all of our own custom prints, um, we were um, approached by Roche Bobois to um, do a poster there, Mahjong, their iconic, iconic Mahjong set, which um, they've had since the 1950s. And so that you know was an honor. And I think for us, looking at um, doing home is more so about thinking of doing lifestyle. I think, yes, you know, yes. as a brand now, as a fashion designer, mm -hmm. you can focus on just fashion, but I think that there's so much more to it, especially because of social media and everybody wants everything everywhere now, and they want to have all different aspects of you. They want your shoes, they want your bag, they want, you know, what you're sleeping on. And so, you know, to think more globally in a brand that can touch 
as much as possible. You know, just branching out into lifestyle and home is just the next step. What do you strive for? What do you think is uh, you can give to fashion and be unique today and so today? Both of you. You know, I design clothing for women and I am a woman and I think that our approach to design um, is different because we're wearing the clothes. And I think in these changing times when women have so much more responsibility and we're so incredibly busy and we're on the go, addressing the needs of the customer, um, it's so urgent that the clothing is comfortable mm -hmm. and that it really works. You know, you don't wanna sit down for a meeting all wrinkled because <laughs> you were in a, in a cab or in a hot environment, whatever, and you yeah. arrived crushed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want your feet to be aching. It takes an edge off of your competitiveness. Absolutely. If you are not comfortable. So, mm -hmm. you know, looking gorgeous and being comfortable. And achieves. unique and, and true to yourself. Yep, and exactly. True to, yourself. true to yourself. And that's what's beautiful now. You can be feminine and powerful. Powerful. And there was a time when you had to choose. You know, being powerful meant you had to the, the, have the a, executive a suit. suit. The corporate exactly. board suit. Exactly. Yes. And now, just being yourself and expressing yes. your individuality is more powerful. I think that's why this is an important behind, event, an uh, important exhibit. A yes. Yes, yes. You know, so it's a really exciting yes, time. Yes, yes. Um, and I think that we have a great natural understanding of the needs of our customers. Tell us about some of the experiences, Mimi, you had growing up in Ghana that you bought into your fashion brand or signature. Being born in Ghana, I have kind of a, a displaced kind of feeling because I came here when I was five years old. Um, and so I'm very much so African American and I'm very much so African because in our house it was very traditional. What I've been interested in in fashion and when I was, when I used to look at stories and people using Africa's inspiration, I guess I just didn't like how it was always based off of only like the prints or the wax prints or I felt like there was like so much more story in there and I felt like it was always on the surface and it was always the same. And um, I felt like there was not a lot of depth, like no one was really going back and researching. And so I started looking at um, a lot of pre-colonial um, African tribes um, because my mom has a scar on her cheek and she told me she got it when she was 13 and it was like a tribal mark that she had. And um, I started researching different tribal marks and what they meant and um, it took me to the Omo Valley where they do a lot of decoration all over their body with florals and, and um, different items. And I wanted to express that in a way that was really elegant, taking something that people, because scarification is definitely something that people look at as you know, it's not beautiful. It's it's like tattooing. It's scarring the skin. But who's to say that that's not beautiful? You're a product of your environment. So however, wherever you grow, whatever people kind of tell you, you're going to feel that way. You're going to find the beauty in it. So I just take some of those traditions and try to create really elegant silhouettes. So allow someone to look at a garment and just say, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And then when they hear about the inspiration, they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't mm -hmm. even know it came from there. So it's always really supposed to be, you know, subtle and to give a new vision of Africa, one that's really unexpected, one that's, um, you know, kind of whimsical and, um, and new. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really what we're trying to do. And that's, I guess, where the uniqueness is. So tell us about your experiences, Tracy, growing up in Detroit. Right. I'm a native of Detroit and so proud of it. And I think that it definitely colors um, my design inspiration and, you know, everything I do. And last fall, we actually filmed our, our fall fashion film in Detroit and it was just a great celebration of the city and of family and all the things that I know and love. Um, but I think as a Detroiter, you know, we grew up loving fashion. Mm -hmm. um, I think people of color love to dress up and, you know, everybody still dresses to go to church. And, you know, here in New York, you can you can run into church in your jogging clothes <laughs> and it's fine. But in Detroit, you still dress to go to, yes. you know, to church and to go to the theater and to go to a nice restaurant. And so that's what I grew up with. Yes. And my, my mom and grandmother, they always dressed. My mom sewed um, for so many occasions, you know, if she was going out that evening, she would literally start sewing a dress. Like, that afternoon. It, exactly. Yes. And I would do the finishing while she did her makeup. So that's wonderful. You know, that was our routine. But I, I loved that and the excitement of it and, and just the, the celebratory mood. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to keep that as casual as life is becoming. Exactly. Um, I think you still, you know, when you're dressed properly for an event exactly. and you walk in, there's mm -hmm. nothing like the feeling of wonderful. knowing wonderful. that you wonderful. look good. And I think our customers expect that from us. Mm -hmm. They need that extra lift. 
and um, we all need it as people. Absolutely. And we don't just do it for ourselves, we do it for those who oh, will see us. Yeah. Because, you know, how many times has someone come up to you exactly. and said they love what you have on or, yeah. or what you had on made them smile or the color made <laughs> yes, them happy yes, or yes. whatever. So I think it's also something that we do for each other. I remember maybe you didn't grow up with it in Africa, I hope you did. But I remember when we were growing up, Tracy, Soul Train, we used to... Oh, yeah. People used to... Okay, people have train. to... Of course, you, you love Soul Train, you know what I mean? Yeah. You dress, and that was the moment to dress. Even I didn't go to Soul Train, but you dressed up mm-hmm. in yep. the attitude of Soul Train when you were going out to go mm-hmm. to a dance or yep. something. Mm-hmm. So it's Definitely. always been about us getting dressed to go out to celebrate and to celebrate it's life. It's so funny that you mm-hmm. mentioned that, too, because, you know, I said that uh, Martine Sipon was... Uh, my first boss, design boss, and she loved Soul Train. Soul Train. She would ask me to watch, you know, she, Soul she Train. had, she had uh, VHS tapes. Yes, yes, yes. Soul Train episode. I have a whole set, it was, a box set. <laughs> I love it. Uh, to wrap it up, ladies, I want to ask you a special question. Our first lady, Michelle Obama, mm. has done so much for fashion. Yes. She's embraced fashion, not only black, quote unquote, fashion designers, but fashion. Mm-hmm. Now, you both have had the privilege of having our first lady wear some of your designs, have you not? Yes. yes. What was that like when you first saw her wearing your dress? <laughs> well, for me, it was unbelievable. You would have never thought that something like that, and, and I would have never thought that like a first lady would look at an emerging designer, because mm-hmm. we were very new, mm-hmm. and give us an opportunity to dress her mm-hmm. on that kind of a stage that mm-hmm. she's on, mm-hmm. being the... Um, you know, the first lady yes. really of the world. Yes. Yeah. And so um, it's been a huge, huge honor. And it made it made us like step up our to work the level. and caliber, <laughs> everything, you yeah, know, yeah. like this is how it has to be. You know, it mm-hmm. just um, it's been a blessing all around. And it's something that you can just cherish with, mm-hmm. with you. And it's history. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Tracy. Right. It's. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know what? It's it's I think it's I don't want to say it's the cat, but it's the, it's, it's, the, it's the, one of the ultimate experiences yeah. of my career. Of your career. Yeah. And you know, she's I think not just because she's the first lady, but she's someone we admire My, yeah. so greatly. Mm-hmm. And you know, she's been so supportive and so loving and so loving. inclusive yes. yeah. um of all of us and yeah, of all, the fashion all fashion community all the community as a of fashion. whole. Yeah. And you know, it's when you're dressing people that you admire. Yes. Um, then you know that your work yes. is worthwhile, yes, and yes, it, yes. It, it takes on um, exponential meaning. Wonderful. You know, so Wonderful it's meaning. been such a pleasure, and you know, to know that she wears the clothes and she she wears them in her private life, which yes. you know, yes. whatever little space she can carve out for herself, as well as in her public life, mm-hmm. has been, you know, just gives me an amazing, amazing, emotional, amazing, yeah. 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 Feeling. Well, and we're going to miss her. I'm yeah. going to miss her in we're both your designs. We're going to shed salty tears. Oh, we're going to shed loads of tears. We're going to miss her. I'm, I can't wait to see her say the farewell on the helicopter leaving, you know, mm-hmm. or going to Georgetown where she is. But I, I think that she's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to miss she's her. She's been a blessing to us all. A blessing to us all. Mm-hmm. Not only in fashion, but just as an inspiration. Yes. yes. So, ladies, I thank you very much for this little ch- ch- chat chat. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> Wonderful conversation. It's great to be you with you all. Us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.